The books include Cultural Competency for Health Administration and Public Health, published by Jones and Bartlett, and Cultural Competency for the Health Professions, also published by the same publisher. The newest book that we're here to celebrate tonight is Health Disparities, Diversity and Inclusion, Controversies, Context, and Solution. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce my wife, the beautiful Dr. Pamela. all of you here. Thank you so much for coming. And I see some of my fantastic students. It takes, it, it's heart breaking to see you all <laughs> come in here and know that I'm not going to see you often um, after today. So we have to really continue to stay in touch. And to everyone that is here, I want to thank my husband because honestly I could not get what I get done without him. He is absolutely supportive and fantastic, and I love him. We've been married for 31 years, and I am so grateful that he's been able to stick by all of these adventures that I participate in. And I also want to note that my son, um, who is in the back with the baseball hat on, that's my son, <laughs> Brandon Rose, and I'm so happy that he's here today. Um, my son is an attorney, um, he's such a bright, wonderful young man, so supportive, and it's just such a pleasure to have him here today. And there's one more in the bunch, and that is my lovely daughter, Courtney, but she couldn't be here because she's at Columbia University, and she's getting prepared to um, defend her, or, or present her proposal for her dissertation. So she's working on her doctorate. So I said, no, no, you stay there. We'll make sure that you know what happened here, but you stay there so you can stay focused. So um, with that being said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I do want to thank Books and Books, especially Mitchell Kaplan, um, the owner of the bookstore. This is my third book launch at this particular uh, store, which happens to be one of my favorite bookstores in the world. And so I really thank him for allowing me to come and launch my books before I go off on my book tours. He's been wonderful. And everyone here is so supportive and helpful whenever I have a book talk, so I do thank them. I want to start with why I wrote this book. So I wrote this book because I was a student at Yale University working on my master's degree in public health. And at that time, to be honest with you, I wasn't really aware that health disparities existed to the degree that they exist. I knew they existed. Um, my father was a surgeon, uh, graduated from Columbia College of Physicians and Surgeons. He was an attending at Harlem Hospital. And so I always had a sense that there was something happening that was not right in terms of health, but I didn't really understand the extent of it. So I started taking courses uh, at Yale, working on my public health degree, and all excited about solving the world's problems. And then I realized that the problems were bigger than I had ever imagined. And I began to understand something that I didn't uh, ever come to terms with. I haven't come to terms with it still to this day. And that is that black people, people of color in the United States are sicker than the white population in the United States, health-wise. And the question that I had was, why? Why is that the case? And initially, the response that I was getting was that it's because of genetics. And I said, oh, no, no, that cannot be true. Why is that not true? It is not true because black people were brought over here from West Africa as slaves to work the land because of their endurance, because of their understanding of the land, because of their strength, and so forth. This is not an inferior group, not physically. What does this mean? That was unacceptable to me. And so that is what really started my journey into trying to understand why are there health disparities. So for those who are not aware, because I'm going to say this term, health disparities, over and over and over, because that's the title of the book, 
health disparities, diversity, and inclusion. What does it mean? It simply means that gap that exists between people of color and the white population in terms of health status. And for the black population, this happens to be Black History Month, so I will focus in a little bit more there. But for the black population, the situation is more severe than any other group. So I'm going to do a little bit of reading from the book so that we can get a better understanding of some of the things that I'm saying. So in this book, um, on page 18, I talk about some of the health issues that black people experience in the United States. So I want to share some of those with you because I think you'll find them shocking. It looks like this, it's a table. Because there's so much information in this book that I did quite a few tables to help the information be clear. So for example, black people, African Americans, have the highest cancer death rate of any racial or ethnic group in the United States. In 2010, if we go back a little ways, African Americans were 30% more likely to die from heart disease than non-Hispanic whites. Twice as likely to have diabetes than are whites. African Americans have 2.2 times the infant mortality rate as non-Hispanic whites. They are 3.5 times as likely to die as infants due to complications related to low birth weight as compared to non-Hispanic white infants. And we don't want to forget American Indians, and I'm going to use the term Native Americans. There is an office in the United States called the Office of Management and Budget. This office reports to the President of the United States, and they determine the racial categories for the United States. So for a moment, let me just give a disclaimer. I am the messenger about this racial categorization, this is not my message, okay? So what they have determined is that Hispanic is not a race, that Hispanic is an ethnic group. Yeah. And why? Because you can have black Hispanic, you can have white Hispanic, Asian Hispanic, and Native American Hispanic. So with that being said, white Hispanics do not experience the same level of health disparity as black Hispanics. This is a fact. So this gives us some idea that there is something going on that has to do with races of people, not based on genetics, but what people are experiencing in this country on a racial basis. So that's really important. When we look at Native Americans, the incidence of diabetes is more than twice that of whites. Native Americans were twice as likely to die from diabetes as non-Hispanic white women in 2013. In 2010, Native Americans were 2.7 times more likely to be diagnosed with end-stage renal disease than were non-white Hispanic. So as we continue to look at these racial groups and really dig into the 